Hi, I'm Danny, also known as GCSE Potential, and today I'm here with a very well-known Sumto, uh, the guy who runs Brampton, Brampton Manor Academy, of course. Sumto is a student here. You can introduce yourself. Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Sumto, uh, first year doing Maths and Computer Science at St. Catharines, and I, as he said, I went to Brampton Manor and did Maths, Further Maths, Chemistry and Physics for my A-levels. Perfect. Thank you very much. Obviously, very well done. Maths and Computer Science is an extremely competitive course, so we're very excited to have him on today. So in today's video, we're basically going to be talking about how to get into Oxford for Maths and Computer science so we're going to run through every single step of the process but just to begin with some so why did you choose oxford and why did you want to do maths and cs over other courses like maybe straight maths or straight cs um i think in terms of choosing uh, oxford i'd always wanted to apply to one of oxford or cambridge and i guess the what pulled me over the edge was that cambridge actually didn't do my course and i wasn't fond of the idea of sitting step i think obviously <laughs> yeah because step is a really hard test and and if I did straight maths, I would have had to set a step. And it's not as if that was like the sole reason. It's not like, oh, I was scared of steps, so I didn't apply there. But I also did want to have the half of CS, right? Mm. So again, moving on to why I wanted to do maths and CS, I've always loved maths from like, you know, secondary school. Um, I enjoyed it and whatnot. And CS was sort of a newfound passion. Mm. Um, in like year 12, I was sort of looking at what I wanted to do. I kind of wanted to do engineering, as you could think, um, tell from my A-level choices, chemistry, physics, maths, like that's engineering. Then I thought, well, I don't really like this when I was trying to do research, doing super curriculars. I was like, I wasn't really sure, like I was doing it and I wasn't enjoying it, it just felt like a chore. Yeah. So then I was like, I think it was during Christmas, I was like, you know, I'm going to learn how to code yeah. and see how I enjoy it. And I started um, coding a lot more and I enjoyed it. And there's a website out there if anyone wants to like look at it, Project Euler. I did loads of the tasks there and it's like mathematical coding exercises in whatever language you want. And it's quite fun if you like maths and you enjoy coding. It helps you improve coding. So obviously there's still like code walls and everything as well. So I was just doing a lot of that and I enjoyed it. And I ended up um, swearing myself towards that um, towards the degree. Okay, so now to begin with the actual application process. Obviously there's so many different steps, but we're gonna take a chronological order. So we'll begin with GCSEs. So my two questions I guess are, what GCSEs did, well more than two questions, what GCSEs did you get? What sort of GCSEs do you need for maths and computer science at Oxford? And I guess which ones are most important? Um, I got seven nines, four eights, and one seven. Uh, in terms of what GCSEs are needed for Oxford, the only thing I can tell you is to do as well as you can. Mm. There's no threshold for, oh no, you've got a six here, we can't let you in. There's no threshold for that. There's no, you know, okay, you've got all nines, now you're definitely in. Sort of do as well as you can, and obviously do as well as you can in the subjects that you think will lead you to, the, um, to what you want to study. So, you know, your maths, your sciences, if you want to study something along those lines. Um, you know, something like a language, I wouldn't worry about. If you, if you get like a four or five in a language, like Oxford aren't silly, right? They're going to look at that and they're going to see a four or five and they're going to be like, well, he's not coming here to study French or German. He's coming here to study maths or mm -hmm. law or classics or whatever it is, right? So I think don't worry too much if you're maybe struggling in a subject like that. Um, in that stage but again as I said do as well as you can try and get eights and nines and it's not the end of the world if you get sevens or sixes or, or whatever it is okay brilliant um and just out of interest how much do you think they care about like your maths GCSE so if we're doing maths and CS for example do you need nines in both those subjects or what sorts of the criteria uh well I didn't study CS or GCSE so I mean they couldn't even look at my <laughs> grade if I got one I think the A level one is a lot more important um if you I don't know, if you've got a seven in Maths GCSE, but you're predicting an A star, why would they look at what you did two years ago as opposed to what you're at now? People can improve, so um, so yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. And a very good segue to A-levels now. So what A-levels do you sort of need for maths and computer science? I think a lot of people often think that you need to do computer science A-level, which is kind of a weird thought. So I guess run me through your A-level choices and then which A-levels do you think are most conducive to the course? I think, uh, so to apply on the website, uh, maths is compulsory. Further maths is strongly advised. I think on the admissions statistics, it's like 97% of applicants have taken further maths or some level, um, you know, if they're international. Uh, and next in the list is actually physics, funnily enough. And I was surprised when I saw that. Um, and then obviously computer science is there, but it's not a compulsory at all. As, as you heard, I did not do computer science A-level. And I guess regarding that, I would say... Um, it may give you a bit of a helping hand if you did computer science A level, but it's by no means compulsory. A lot of stuff obviously is transferable, like your big O notation and algorithms and stuff. But um, that stuff is is I wouldn't say easy to learn, but if you you know you are passionate about this degree, 
you know maybe in the summer before you you come into uni you do just a little bit of research on you know what is big notation nothing like crazy nothing hard but just you know maybe watch one or two youtube videos i know there's a couple of youtube videos that like it's like oh explain abandoning research in three minutes like and you just watch that video so i think it's worth doing that but i would say don't be discouraged by implying if you haven't done computer science a level because you know i didn't do a gcc or a level so i was really at the deep end but coming here now it's it's been all right and you know they teach you um to a decent level so yeah and i think on the website i think it might be a star a star a or a star a a which is the typical like grade requirement so with regard to predicted grades firstly do you need three or four a levels and secondly what sort of grades do you think you should be applying with predicted uh so the requirement's actually a star a a which is that's quite nice actually yeah has a, yeah it's quite lenient compared to other courses i know some of the like science and medicine is like a star a star a and whatnot try and get more obviously for me i sat a level maths early which um i would say helped a lot because by by the time i got the offer all i needed was two a's because i'd achieved the a star the, the the year earlier right so if maybe your school offers that or you know a school that offers that do try and do that if you are passionate about maths and whatnot because it gets one out of the way early and gives puts less pressure on you in the a level period um so the offer is actually it's a star aa with an a star in either maths or further so you don't actually need an a star in further and ironically you don't need a math uh, a star in maths if you get an a star in further which yeah. is a bit backwards but so it's an a star in either maths or further yeah. and then two a's in the other two uh, you're talking about four a levels you yeah. don't need four a levels so i could have hypothetically failed a f my fourth a level and still got an offer um because it's a three a level offer so don't feel pressured to have to do four a levels if you don't need to because it's unnecessary added stress. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on now from A-levels. I guess the first part of the UCAS application is personal statements. But the weird thing about maths and CS is, for humanities and stuff, it's quite cookie cutter what you need to do, reading different books and stuff. Whereas maths and CS, I don't really know how many books are available. It doesn't really make much sense you have to write a personal statement. So how did you approach the personal statement and what's your best advice for it in terms of like super curriculars, etc.? Um, yeah, I can you would say it's not really, there's no like default thing to do, right? There's a lot of things, different things you could do. But I think that's a, a benefit, right? Mm -hmm. There's um, MOOCs, um, there's YouTube videos you can watch. There's You can literally just do a project yourself and talk about it. You can write a project, research project. Personally, what I did, I had I did a research project, 2000 word essay. Uh, my school made me do it, but <laughs> but it did give me a lot of insight into some of the t t topics. So I think that was nice. One of my paragraphs was actually based on a YouTube video I'd watched just casually. And I was really interested in the topic, just did a bit more research into it look at looked at like it was sort of a conjecture it was like a problem okay. so i just looked into it and you know worked on it a bit and I wrote about that and then my last paragraph was more of like a hands-on thingy me and my friend actually together we were looking at a task on project euler yeah. and we kind of went deeper and deeper into the task and even went beyond the task and then we wrote like a bits of code for it um and i talked about that a lot so i think just do what you think is enjoyable you don't have to write an essay like i said i wrote about a youtube video in one of my paragraphs like it can be as easy as that but obviously don't be lazy right don't just sit there and write about three youtube videos you've watched and be lazy about it do try and do some stuff that's hands-on and obviously don't try and lie i will also say i know the the process is changing a bit soon so um whatever they ask you I, it will still be similar sort of ideas so do definitely like still be on your supercurriculars, be doing projects and tasks because I imagine a, one of the questions could be like, what tasks or things have you yeah. done to to um, deepen your understanding of this degree or something like that. So I would say just because the personal statements aren't necessarily there anymore, um, that you should drop super, super curriculars. You should definitely still um, do them. And, whatnot. and just out of interest, how important do you think personal statement is relative to other parts of the application? I think specifically for, I guess, Oxford and my course, I thought the admissions test was a lot more important. I think if it was an order, I would be admissions tests and then like personal statement and predicted grades and GCSE grades all on the same level. Like I think the admissions test was definitely the most important. And obviously that's not to say that you should ignore the um, personal statement or whatever they replace it with just try your best on every part but also don't stress out over personal statement you know because the admissions test is a bit more important so perfect thank you so much and once again a very nice segue to the admissions test so for oxford maths and computer science you have to set the mat which is a mathematical aptitude test if you were to put it on a ranking i think tamu is probably the easiest maths test 
then it's the MAT, and then step is just at the ceiling. It's very difficult. Um, so it's changed this year. When Sumto sat her, I think it was 10 multiple choice questions and then four long answer questions. Whereas from now on, it's 27 questions, which are all multiple choice. But I think the last two or something are long answer. So firstly, like what sort of score do you need? I know zero to 100. Secondly, what score did you get? And thirdly, how would you prepare if you went back? Well, again, there's no pass mark, I guess. Yeah. Oxford don't really have a pass mark. And I think they say that explicitly in the... Mm -hmm in the website, there's no pass mark to get you in. You can get an interview with a score of 30, you can get, you can not get an interview with a score of 80. Like it, it really is a holistic process where they look at everything. What I was aiming for was a score of 70 plus. For maths and computer science, the admissions test scores are really high um, compared to the other two because you see the averages of all of them. So with maths and CS, like the averages are just way higher because you get crazy international students yeah. sitting the mat after they've already done like pre-calc or whatever it is <laughs> in their country like the, the chinese students and the indian kids like they're, they're really smart yeah. right so the averages are really high but i would say like don't let that discourage you and just think about yourself and try and improve yourself as much as you can um i achieved a 77 out of 100 my guy that's why which, I <laughs> which which was i mean to my surprise it was a lot better than I thought I did. Again, when you come out of a test, you you antagonize yourself. You think you did the worst that you possibly could. But, you know, I guess just go in there confident. I think that was the main thing for me. Obviously, you're scared, you're nervous. I think I just went in with a bit of confidence. Like, I I'd, I'd um, to prepare, like, I would did all of the papers, um, looked at the answers, did some with my friends, did some step questions, did some TMUA questions. Like, literally one of the years, one of the TMUA questions was identical to the match question the only difference was that one of the multiple choice options was like slightly different yeah. which doesn't change the answer right <laughs> but like so that like that was crazy to me so i did basically every not every team you paper but i did a lot of them and then for step i'd kind of handpicked the the realistic questions mm. you kind of notice how difficult mat and step like the differences between them so you can kind of handpick the questions in step that are similar in difficulty to the math questions mm. obviously the ones that are harder you can you can sort of leave because you don't need to and sort of which step questions did you do so was it step one step two step three the step foundation modules if you remember uh step foundation modules and step one step two and step three is further maths and the mat has no further maths in fact the mat is only as knowledge and sequences of the series um which isn't the worst topic in the world. So just to echo something that Santos said earlier, um, 70 plus is a score that he was aiming for, but it's definitely a contextualized thing. So if you go to like Eton, for example, they probably expect you to have a much higher score. Whereas if you've gone to like a really disadvantaged state school, they probably wouldn't expect as much of you. Um, obviously Santo went to Brampton, which is a very good school, um, but it's also in dis disadvantaged area. But so I think 70 is probably a good region um, to sort of aim for. Obviously try and do as best as you can. Um, but now moving on to the interview. So I think my first question is like, how important do you think the interview is? And then, obviously, since only a third of applicants get invited, it is quite competitive. And then beyond that, we can talk a little bit about how to prepare for the interview, um, roughly speaking, because you're not allowed to divulge too much. What was your interview like, etc.? So, in terms of the importance of the interview, I think at that point, you're not in the top third of the applicants. You've presumably done pretty well in your admissions test. It's sort of like a final push. I think a lot of people, they might get an interview and they might not expect it and they think, Oh, like there's no like they think oh my missus test score is too bad anyway the reason they've invited you to interview is because they believe that you can achieve an offer mm. so if you're at this stage there is no reason to to give up or to think nah my mat score was bad that like, like this interview is probably not gonna matter i'm just gonna leave it um one thing i will say is also as soon as you've done your missions test start prepping for interviews um i guess piggybacking off what i've just said don't think that just because you've done bad you're not gonna get an interview because you don't want to be that guy that when you get an interview, you're just underprepared because, you know, you've left it for only a week before. So as soon as I finished my test, I guess maybe I gave myself a couple of days of a break. I was doing interview practice. My YouTube, if you saw my YouTube feed at that time, it would have just been straight interview questions. <laughs> Cambridge, Oxford, everything. Um, and there's a, I think it's called TBO Problem Solving Booklet by Dr. Frost Maths. I used that quite a bit. Um, I used to just go through, work through them. And obviously work through, work with your peers as well. People that also have interviews. Uh, some of your other friends that are good at maths. Maybe someone in the older year that you know that got in, used LinkedIn well, asked people. I asked a couple of people on LinkedIn for interviews. I think in total, I want to say I did over like 15 to 20 interviews in that little time. I, like I genuinely did loads. I had loads of mentors. I was just like, you know what, I've got an interview now. I can't waste this opportunity. 
practice a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot. What sort of stuff do you think tends to come up in maths and CS interviews? So is it like a lot of coding? Do you have to, do, you have to write code and paper? What sort of maths comes up? So yeah, what's the general thing of like, which topics did you prepare for? Um, maths interviews, there's a lot of stuff online that those have been going on for years. Um, and you can kind of make maths interviews questions as well. In a way, there's loads of them. Those are just like, I guess it, it tests your actual understanding of maths because I feel like an A-level, you can kind of get away and get an A or an A-star by kind of just memorising how yeah. to do certain type of question because it will go come up again and again. In terms of maths interview, it kind of digs deep into do you really know what's going on? Do you know why we do this in this topic? Or do you know why we do that in that topic? That sort of thing. Um, problem solving questions, noticing patterns. I think mm -hmm. patterns is a is a thing, especially even when you're studying for the MAT, noticing patterns and links between things is a thing they love testing, just to check again, that like you really know what's going on. There's a computer science, it's sort of logic questions. So it's sort of like, can I think this through properly? Um, one thing I can compare it to is MET question six. If you think, um, if you look at the older MET question six from like 2007 to 2013, they do a lot of like liar questions or who is lying in this situation. Mm -hmm. they, they, they love those type of questions. So it's questions like those, like, can I logically think this process through? If this person is lying, that person might not be lying, blah, 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 blah. That's the sort of questions they love asking. Obviously they'll throw in some maths here and there, obviously, because computer science has a lot of maths in it. What sort of math challenge, like senior math challenge, what sort of results did you tend to get? And how important do you think it was in preparing for the MAT and the interview? Um, I wasn't a, a pr prodigy in terms of <laughs> math challenges. I, I did it, in, I think, once or twice in secondary and I got, I think, a silver and a bronze maybe. And then in year 12, I got a silver and year 13, I got a gold. Um, so nothing like extraordinary, no BMO or anything. I would say, I think that was a good point. They are quite good in terms of, I guess, again, like understanding what, what the math is actually doing and spotting patterns. The math challenges are very... They love like checking that you understand like patterns and seeing things like like there's always a, an easier way to do something if you think about it for long enough i guess that's the way i can put it so yeah definitely try and get yourself involved in senior maths challenge if you're at that level junior maths challenge intermediate maths challenge whatever it is just try and get your brain in that sort of um mindset but yeah okay thank you so much for all of that extremely useful advice um just to end off do you have any final remarks for anyone applying for maths and cs at oxford um i'm no motivational speaker but do not not apply because you don't think you will get in. That is the most silly thing I've heard. I've had so many people say, oh, I was so close to not applying because I didn't think I would get in. And they're here in Oxford sitting next to me in a lecture. So I think just believe in yourself. It never hurts to apply. Like, just think about the, the positives of getting in rather than, oh, no, I'm not going to get in, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, and it also gives you a chance to just improve, yeah, to hone your intelligence or to just improve the way you think because you're now doing research into things. Um, yeah, I guess it, give, it makes you more of an academic is, is what I can say. Yeah. So it's a, an experience that is still good to have, I think. So definitely apply, you know, sitting the admissions test. Sitting the admissions test helped me a lot when I was doing further maths because... A lot of it, I remember doing some further math questions and I was thinking, this is so similar to some of the MAT questions. But obviously it's a lot easier, right? Yeah. Because the MAT is harder than like the further math paper. So it can help you in, in terms of your actual A-levels as well. Um, so yeah, just just go for it. Don't don't think, yeah, I'm not going to get in. But yeah, that, that's it. Thank you so much, Samso. Um, he'll probably be your Jane Street interviewer in a few years time if you're a little bit younger. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having, um, I mean, coming on. If you want to follow him on LinkedIn, you can follow him on LinkedIn. I don't know if you have any other socials that you want to plug or follow him on LinkedIn. Make sure you follow him. But yeah, thank you so much. And hopefully you can be a Matt and CS student here one day.